I was gifted about 45 pounds of green tomatoes. And we love pickled green tomatoes. So I thought I'd take you along with me with the process of making our pickled green tomatoes. Okay guys, we're going to talk about the ingredients. There's not a whole lot. We've got uh, cloves of garlic and some bay leaves. And some of these cloves are pretty big. Some we raised. I've got some of my pickled jalapenos. And I've got some dill wheat in here, but I don't have enough. So I was really discouraged when I found out. I thought I had a whole thing of it, but I don't. So I'm just using what I got. I've got some whole peppercorns, and I've got some yellow mustard seed. And if you want it a little bit hotter, you can use brown mustard seed. They're a little bit spicier. And I've got 10 pounds of cut up tomatoes, green tomatoes. So we're going to get started, and this is a pretty easy process. So we're set to go. Okay, I got my hot jars out, and I'm just going to take four out at a time because I don't like taking them all out and uh, my jars getting cold. So we're going to start layering our ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this dill weed that I've got left. Like I said, I don't have enough for all my jars, and that's what I get for assuming that I had enough. I didn't look. So there's a little bit of dill weed. And I'm going to put one to two cloves of garlic in each jar. It just depends on how big the, the cloves are. Some of them are pretty big. And I'm going to put some bay leaves. Um, you can crumble them up, but I'm just going to put whole bay leaves. I'll put probably two in each jar. So all we got left is uh, some jalapenos. And I'll probably just put t two to three jalapenos in there because we don't like stuff <laughs> too spicy. And some of these jalapenos were pretty, pretty hot. So I don't want to overdo it. Y'all might like stuff really hot, so you can put more if you want to. And I'm going to put... Uh, Probably about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, uh, whole peppercorns. Now, if I was putting it in quart jars, I'd put a whole teaspoon, so a half a teaspoon. Now, I'm going to put a whole teaspoon of uh, mustard seeds because I like that uh, that taste in anything that I pickle. Okay, I almost forgot about my onions. I've got everything else in there, so I'm going to start. I'm just going to put a few onions on the bottom. Now, if you like a lot of onions, you can put a lot more in there. You can put purple onion. This was a sweet Vidalia that I bought. bought a whole bunch of them. We eat a lot of onions, and I, cook, I, I just cook with them. Just about everything I make has got onions in it. And we, we just eat a lot of onions, and they're really good for you. So put as many as you want in there. So after putting my onions in there, I'm going to start layering my tomatoes in there. Just kind of fit. Now you can cut your tomato slices a little bit smaller if you want to. But I find that once they, uh, once you can them, and, you know, they set for a while, they tend to get just a little bit mushy, but not too bad. And so I, I keep mine in, in bigger slices. That's the way we like to eat them. And uh, I don't want to pack them down in there too tight. But I want to get enough down in there. Now, pint size is just right for me and Mr. Brown. Most people would can them in quart jars. But uh, it's just not feasible for, for just us two. And we love... We love these pickled green tomatoes. Okay, we got our jars full. Now we're going to start putting the liquid in. And the liquid is 7 cups of distilled vinegar, 7 cups of water, and a half of a cup of canning salt. 
and you just warm it, you bring it to a boil and just keep your, your liquid hot because you want it hot when it goes in your hot jars. And I'm going to leave about an inch head space in the jars. And y'all, I know my old pot, my stained up favorite pot. I wasn't thinking when I started this video, I should have used my stainless steel pot because uh, it don't look bad like this one, but this is just my favorite pot. So anytime I go to do anything like this, this is the one I grab, and it's so stained up, and I don't know how you keep from it. I mean, it's clean, but it's just stained up on the bottom. So that's what I grabbed as usual, and, you know, you just get used, used to doing something, you just do it. And I'm just always so relaxed and at home when I'm doing videos for y'all that I just don't, I, sometimes I don't think about stuff like that. I got too many tomatoes in my jar. I'm just going to take one out of each so they're not too full. And I'm going to use my debubbler and I'm going to debubble the jars real good. That's a very important step. And I can tell y'all, I have done it. I remember once that I forgot to debubble and I put my lids on and put them in the canner. Of course, this was a pressure canner. And then I realized, Lord, you didn't debubble. And uh, I mean, it's easy to forget, especially if you're in a hurry, but it's a very important process. So always debubble. And I love this debubbler. I got this at Walmart. It does a good job and it it, as you go down the sides of the jars, it does a good job. Doesn't scratch up your jars or anything. Whoops, that one jumped out. We love eating these green tomatoes with uh, a pot of brown beans. We love it with fish. Just so many things we love to eat it with. But this... Uh, this debubbler, like I said, I got at Walmart, and the end is real flexible. And at the other end, it's got a little measuring stick there on the end, so I really like it. It didn't cost much. So I'm going to take my paper towel, a little bit of vinegar on it, and I'm going to wipe the tops, of course. Anything that got on there, we need to get off so that it gets a good seal. Now, if you don't have cannon salt I meant to tell you um, some people will use their pink Himalayan salt or kosher salt but I always keep a big jar of cannon salt for uh, stuff like this so we're gonna get our lids on and I just keep my lids in a little bit of warm water I know I've heard a couple people say that it's not as important they don't think it's as important anymore to have your lids just boiling hot so I keep mine in just uh, warm water we're gonna put our rings on finger tight and then I'm gonna get them in the canner now whether if you're doing pints or quarts either one you're gonna water bath can them for 20 minutes pints and quarts. Either one, 20 minutes. So I'm going to get these four in here, then I'm going to get some more jars out and fill them up. And uh, I don't know, I think this is going to make probably about 12 pints. We'll have to see. Okay, I got those in there. I got every one of them filled. I just wanted to show y'all what the jar looks like it makes it makes a pretty jar with all that in there so now we're going to get them all in the canner we got them boiling guys so they're going to boil for 20 minutes and there's at least two inches of water over the top okay while well, my canner's going i think i'm going to get some wood fill up the wood cook stove.
Thanks for stopping by, guys, and canning with me. Y'all come back. I hope y'all liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, y'all subscribe because it really helps me. And God bless everybody.